name is EHTP in Casablanca. I will present a work that I have just started doing with my uh, colleague Fuad Gidwali from the Morocco National Weather Service. Both of us coming from uh, numerical uh, world, numerical modeling world, and especially on the medium range weather forecast. Now we are making this transition to the subseasonal time scale. So I will spend a lot of time talking about our understanding of uh, this MGO in our regime, regime and connection. And also I will present some uh, preliminary results of that we have just produced recently. Uh, let me first talk about my country and why we are interested in such connection between MGO and NAO and its uh, effect on precipitation. So Morocco is located in the northwestern part of Africa. We are under the influence of the mid-latitude weather systems. We have a heterogeneous landscape, our Atlantic mountains. We have the Atlantic Ocean in, in the west, Mediterranean in north, and Sahara Desert in the south. And during winter time, mid-latitude storms are a major source of precipitation over Morocco, especially the north part. And the North Atlantic large scale circulation has a strong influence, influence on both the weather and climate. Our objective is to see how this migratory North Atlantic disturbance, frontal systems, Mediterranean storms can influence, impact our rainfall mechanisms and how they are modulated by some large scale, large scale patterns. In fact, most rainfall are modulated by North Atlantic jet oscillation from north to south. And there is kind of a seasonal variability which is controlled by this tropical, extratropical oscillation. We want to understand how this tropical, extratropical oscillation, oscillation have an impact our atmospheric dynamics of our Morocco. And the last objective is to see how can we forecast the weather, the climate at subseasonal scale uh, using this still connection between rainfall and tropical extratropical oscillation. So as I mentioned before, we are strongly uh, influenced by the North Atlantic oscillation. So in, it, in the positive phase, a stronger than normal subtropical high pressure and a deep, deeper than usual isolated low has an impact of having stronger western winds and storm activity across the Atlantic Ocean. And we have winter, winter, winter in Northeast Europe, but drier condition in Morocco. And if we are lucky, because we need rain in Morocco for agriculture, we end the negative in Aou is well correlated with wet condition in Morocco. So large part of my talk, it will be based on this very precious work of Castle, okay? And how it relates each day, okay? How it's, this work attributes each day, daily anomalous circulation to one of the four regimes, okay? So the idea is how can we use this connection between days and regimes, first, and second, try to understand what control this transition between different regimes. So the positive and negative in AU, they are here, as I have mentioned before, So one mechanism that, what, that we are interested in in this is this modulating effect of MGO over the occurrence of different regimes. And we are very, at, at, at the first time when I have seen this interaction between different 
regimes and different phases of MGO, I have seen that there is a potential to use this information to relate this connection between weather regimes and the MGO phases on the rainfall over Morocco. As we have seen before, the negative phase of NAO is, is, we can have it after 10 days of uh, phase, after phase six, okay, as we see here, and largely over phase seven and phase eight, we are in this negative uh, phase of NAO, which is good for us to have this weather condition in perspective. But on the opposite, the positive phase of Inau, six days after phase three, we have this occurrence of, or forcing of a positive, negative, uh, positive uh, oscillation for the North Atlantic. So, according to Christophe Casso, Generally, a positive oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation regimes tend to be preceded by phase three or four of the MGO. On the other hand, negative oscillation uh, tend, tend to be preceded by phase six, seven of the MGO. And the Scandinavian blocking tend to be present during phase five, five of MGO. And there is a time scale of the MGO influence, which influence which is about 10 two days. So there is a lagged influence of different phases of MGO on the uh, weather regimes over our region. So, as I mentioned before, the first part of my talk it will be dedicated to these physical mechanisms of MGO North Atlantic Oscillation Regime connections. So, as I, we have just started dealing with this connection, I, I will present why in, if we have mage, phase three in MGO, we're gonna end by having a positive uh, oscillation after 10 days. This is the main object of this part. So, as we have seen before, MGO phase, the MGO oscillation, it will force some Rossby wave excitation of our, if we are in phase three or phase six, we have kind of dipole. With enhanced, for example, phase three, we have enhanced convection over the Indian Ocean and suppressed convection on, over the maritime continent. So this dipole will excite some Rossby waves. And if we plot here the Rossby wave source term, advection term, we see that this dipole have, has an impact after on the North Atlantic jet stream. So strong growth B wave source in the Central Pacific is, is propagating north eastward. If we try to see what happened in the entrance of the jet stream, of the North Atlantic jet stream, we're gonna see that we have, related to this Rossby wave source, that we end up by having a strong upper level convergence on the Eastern Pacific and at the entrance of the North Atlantic jet. And having also, related to this convergence, having this dry condition at the entrance of jet here, in color, we plot the precipit precipitable water, okay? And the arrows show the divergent wind. So here, just at the entrance of the jet stream, we have this strong upper level convergence and we have a dry, dry condition at the entrance of jet. It means that our storm tracks, they will not have enough supply of humidity at their entrance. For the... Uh, uh, after some days of uh, MGO phase in phase three. But on the other hand. Sorry, just, just, so the, the top right block is 
source, okay. So the shading, the red and blue shading. The Rossby wave source advection term. The advection term. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So we see what happened after uh, five days, okay, after having this dipole uh, of uh, MGO phase over the Indian Ocean and the uh, maritime continent, what happens after five days, after zero five days on this position of the, mid, the, the Atlantic jet in this convergence zones? For the, for the MGO in phase six and its forcing of the uh, negative North Atlantic uh, regime, North, uh, North, North, North Atlantic oscillation regime, we have some kind of opposite effect. So we plot the same thing here as before. So Rossby wave source, advection term. And what we have now, we have, so we have here, like before, precipitation water, okay, and diversion wind. And here I have this, plot this uh, mid-latitude or North Atlantic jet. As we can see, we have here the opposite. Instead, instead of, ha of having this convergence at the entrance and dry conditions, now we have more divergence at upper levels and more supply of moisture, which is good for us because it will enhance five days later or m m more a good conditions to have, to have this uh, negative NO well established. This is how I understand, relating to the work of Christoph Castle, this relationship between what happened uh, when we have MGO phase in three and, and six, and what happened in terms of uh, distribution or configurations, both of water and dynamics over the uh, North Atlantic region, especially uh, at the entrance of the jet. So in a way, this is the bridge with which we have this influence between the tropics and the extratropics. We can see it clearly when uh, plotting these this fields. So to summarize the work of CASO, it's kind of overview of the work of CASO. So as I have said before, MGO in phase three, we trigger four Sodrospi waves in the Pacific with phase two and three. We propagate eastward to the North Atlantic region, okay? Modifying the background flow leading to North, North Atlantic oscillation positive due to the interaction with the North Atlantic high frequency plus the intermediate transients. This kind of interaction will have a remote influence for the positive in AO. On the other hand, with phase six in the negative phase and its relationship with the negative phase of NO, we have a development in situ favored by previous blocking conditions as part of this transition that it was mentioned by Laura. So we have kind of preferred transition between the North Atlantic uh, oscillation in its positive phase. Afterward, we have Scandinavian blocking and we end up by having a North Atlantic oscillation in its, in its negative phase. So here we, ca we can see that we have this direct forcing of positive uh, oscillation. This is what it was mentioned by Christoph Kassel. But here, the forcing is not direct. We have this transition by the Scandinavian blocking before having the negative phase of the North Atlantic oscillation. So it's kind of response to the direct to force the Rossby wave, wave, as I have mentioned before, with this uh, Rossby wave uh, term, excitation term. So the uh, response to direct force in Rossby wave initiated by MGO in 667 in the Eastern Pacific associated enhanced moisture leading to this interaction with the North Atlantic high frequency transient and ending by having what we call cyclonic wave breaking. Yes, it's argued in the paper. 
So after given this relationship with MGO in both phases, three and seven, and the response over the extra tropics in terms of North Atlantic oscillation, I will show you some results that we have just, just produced. In fact, we would like to see what happened in terms of precipitation over Morocco related to the MGO oscillation. This is the main uh, uh, objective of this uh, first research work. But we are using uh, weather station, okay, rain gauges, from the, northern, from the National Weather Service at two stations, one in the extreme north, Tangier, and one in the central part of Morocco uh, in, uh, near, the Atlantic, near the Atlantic Ocean. So how we do, so we work for DGF, it's our winter season, from 85 to 2014. And for each, how the methodology is that for each MGO phase, the number of days in which weekly rainfall was above the upper tercile is counted and divided by the total number of days in which in each phase to obtain the occurrence probability of exceeding to the threshold. So the occurrence probability that we, I will show later is calculated uh, following this method. So each phase, we count the number of days in which weekly rainfall was above the upper tensile. So we have chosen this upper tensile because it has been mentioned before in other works that is a good threshold for uh, trying to find this oscillation, this relationship between oscillation of MGO and uh, uh, precipitation elsewhere. So it's the same thing for MGO. It, it, is, it is also a running mean, so a running seven day running mean. Here is the, the outcome of the first first statistics that we have done. So here, for each phase of MGO, the number of days in which we, in which weak, weakly weak moderate strong in our negative is counted and is divided by the total number of days in each phase to obtain the occurrence probability of exceeding the threshold. The same, same as before for precipitation, we do it for uh, North, Atlantic, North Atlantic oscillation in its negative phase. So the, the weak negative phase is uh, where our index is above the upper tercile, moderate is between the lower and the upper tercile, and the strong one is when the negative in our index is below the lower tercile. So as you see here for MGO, NO relationship with when we have a strong NO, we see clearly that here I have, in blue I have phase, phase one, and in red is phase eight. So here I go from one, from phase one to phase eight, okay? So for strong NO, the event where I have a strong NO, I, we see that the occurrence of strong NO happen with a great frequency when we have seven, six, seven, eight phases of MGO. So the, 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 the impact is more clear when picking the strong NO negative uh, events. We have the same thing for the moderate you know, it's, it's in its negative phase. We have phase six, phase seven, and phase eight, which are the dominant here for this moderate you know, occurrence. So it's the same. say on the, on the central Instagram, which is for the strong negative NAO, am I right? Yes. Um, so, so the black bar is one, two, three, and, and then you go up to eight, is the blue? Yes. 
So here it means that with this frequency or this occurrence contribution, it means that in phase eight, strong in you know, it will occur uh, twice as frequently as its climatological mean with this 100%. Okay, with 100%, it means that in phase eight, there is a chance to have strong you know, in negative phase twice as frequently as its climatological mean. Oh, okay, but sorry. So black is eight. Black is eight. Uh, so green, so green is seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> because, yeah, that, 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 so, that, that's important. So black is eight, green is seven, and red is uh, six. And then, and then, okay. And the others one. So we see that for six, seven, eight, we have an increase of the occurrence probability of the negative phase of NAO, especially for strong events. So it is in line with what has been okay. found by uh, Christoph and by Hai. Yeah, yeah, no, it was simply the ordering from eight to one that uh, I, I just needed to. So it is clear for everybody here. So we have also been interested to see what happened in terms of occurrence for the Mediterranean Oscillation Index. Okay, we have kind of Mediterranean Oscillation Index, which is which gives a measure of what happened over the Mediterranean. Okay, in terms of oscillation, there is kind of CISO also in terms of pressure between. Algiers here, okay, and Cairo here. So when we have negative here, we have low pressure here compared to this location in Cairo, we are in this Mediterranean oscillation in its negative phase. So Mediterranean oscillation is in negative phase is something that is good also for Morocco because we will have storm or low pressure systems that will interest the north part of Morocco. So we have also try to find if there is any relationship between the occurrence of this Mediterranean oscillation and the different phases of MGO. Okay? See, here it's just to show that there is, there is a CISO between the two regions. Okay, here we correlate Algiers, geopotential heights at 500, okay, with other points. It's, it's just a correlation, okay, between this point with other points. And we see that we have this a dipole, okay? It means that we have some kind of oscillation. Uh, we, uh, Mediterranean oscillation is based on the fact that what happened here in terms of pressure, it may be anti-correlated with what happened here uh, over Cairo. So we have this Mediterranean oscillation index is a measure of how far in terms of pressure are from, are from Algiers to uh, Cairo. So here when you have a negative phase of MGOs, it means that we have here a low pressure system. So high frequency of, larger, of low pressure systems here will have a high pressure system. Cyclonic here and anti-cyclonic here, it means when we have here a cyclonic, it means that we have a chance to have precipitation over Morocco. So there is a kind of in the case, in the case when we have low pressure system here, okay, and the, when we have here a cyclonic anomalies, and we will have here anti-cyclonic anomalies, it means that we have Mediterranean oscillation in its negative phase. So this correlation, it just shows that all this region doesn't behave as the same as this one. So we have some kind of oscillation that we may, do, that we may measure by having the normalized differential pressure between this spot, which is Algiers, and this spot, which is Cairo. So here we have 
the same, so the same, method, the same methodology as before. So we can see here something very special for the strong Mediterranean oscillation events in, in negative events. So we see that the blocking, or the, not the blocking, the phase, in phase uh, six, okay, we have a high occurrence of strong Mediterranean oscillation negative, okay, compared to the other phases. In fact, what happened here, in, it's the same, the behavior here is the same of what happened for uh, what has been found by Casso when we see the blocking regime. So in phase six, we have a high frequency of blocking regimes. And here in, in phase six, we have a high frequency probability, probability of having a strong Mediterranean oscillation. This is the message that we can have from this plot. And so, co of course, we have very here reduced occurrence of strong Mediterranean oscillation in phase one. So this kind of relationship that we can have also when we try to see this relationship with uh, the, MGO, the MGO and the Mediterranean oscillation. My explanation why we have this occurrence of strong occurrence or high frequency of Mediterranean oscillation in its negative phase when we have this phase six is in fact related to the same finding as Christoph Casso. We have more chance to have negative Mediterranean oscillation with this transition between, with, with its transition to the blocking regimes. There is something very important here. In fact, in Morocco, during my experience as forecaster, I have seen that generally wet conditions of Morocco, they happen, especially when I have this transition between the Atlantic Ridge and the blocking. Scandinavian blocking system. It's something that maybe I will one day present some results on this transition, uh, preferred transition between the Atlantic and the blocking, not preferred, but something that happened to something that is related to precipitation of Morocco. So we're gonna have, a fr we will have this chance to, to, to have this transition between the Atlantic ridge and the blocking there is a chance of having wet conditions over Morocco. Here, this is the main plot of, my, of our first result, is to see how rainfall in, in, in Tangier, so the extreme north of Morocco, so measured from rain gauges, from 85 to 2014, how this precipitation relates to the MGO in different phases. Okay, we see here phase, in phase eight, the occurrence probability it increased to have a precipitation that exceed the upper, the upper percile. Is it good, is it fine because we have this relationship between negative in AO and phase seven and eight. So we can find the explanation why we have this increase between when we have this phase seven and eight, why we have this increase of the occurrence of precipitation exceeding this uh, upper side. But for phase two, up to now, we, we don't have any explanation. The same thing for this, uh, the second station, we have the same signal. So over the same period, we in a very distant location, so Agadir is in the central part of Morocco near the, near the Atlantic Ocean, so we have the same signal in phase two. So there may be something behind this preferred occurrence of high of, of uh, precipitation 
uh, exceeding the, the upper tercile in phase two. And here I will say thank you to Angel, because I, before coming to here, I didn't find any explanation why we have this increase of occurrence, of probability occurrence in phase two, because I don't have a negative in a row to explain why I have this increase. In fact, the idea is that over our region, over the oral Mediterranean region, the four regimes are not enough to explain what happened in terms of weather types. That's why, using the uh, precious tool of angle, I have produced another extra weather type, which is what's missing for our region of interest. So here, we can see the NO in its negative phase, okay, is weather type five. We can see in weather type four, the blocking, the Scandinavian blocking, so it's the same. Here, is, they are similar, these two uh, plots, two maps. Here we have kind of similarity between a positive NO and the weather type number one. And here I have two patterns or two weather types that are different. Okay, this one, the weather type two, is, it can explain something for me, for this relationship between phase two and what happens in terms of precipitation. Here also I plotted the same, with the same tool of angle, the occurrence The probability of having phase one, of having the weather type one in different phases, so it's the first plot here for weather type one, two, three, four, five. As you see, in phase six, seven, eight, we have an increase of the probability, occurrence probability of weather type five, which is close to negative in a U. So it supports, it does support the finding that we have before. In phase, in phase seven, six, seven, eight, we have more frequency of negative phase of NO. This is the first result. So it supports all the finding of Castle, Christoph, A, and High. This is the first result. The second one here, when, when MGO is, is in its phase three and four, we increase the probability of occurrence of weather type two, of weather type, uh, sorry, one, which is similar to the positive North Atlantic oscillation. So it is in line with the finding that uh, of uh, Christoph and High. So it's fine. Here there is something new. So in phase two, we see this, that this weather type is more frequent compared to the others. And also, it is favorable, it's a, it's, a, it's a weather type that is good for having a precipitation over Morocco, because we have here a negative anomalies of geopotential height at 500 HPA. So, sorry. So we have now found the relationship between this extreme events, not extreme, but fair high amount of rainfall observed over Tangiers and Agadir that are related to a weather type which, is, which, which was not present in the classical classification of weather types over the North Atlantic region. We found this, we found, we found this with, with, with this new weather type which is more favorable to have a winter condition over Morocco when we have phase two. I think it's a good, uh, good result for me here at uh, ICTP 
Thank you again, um, Angel, for your uh, tools. Okay. <laughs> so to summarize, so uh, doing our own work with our own data, we have found similar result with Castle. We confirm the finding of Castle and and Lean. Okay. Doing this new classification or new clustering method over the Euro Mediterranean region, we came up with the new weather type, which explain the increase of precipitation over Morocco, both in the north and the south, in phase two. And as ongoing work, we are now using more rain gauges data to confirm this relationship between what happened in phase two and the Oro Mediterranean weather types. Thank you very much.